I'm out on the Nisqually Delta. There's a big flat that uh, is out on the Delta here before it empties into the Puget Sound. And right on the edge of that flat, there's large numbers of these starry flounder that concentrate here. And you can find these fish uh, right on that drop-off. They're feeding on all those nutrients that are getting uh, washed out of the delta. And uh, they're really easy to catch. Um, this fishery is available year-round. You can come here anytime. It's not that hard of a paddle. You just need to be wary of the currents. Uh, try to avoid this fishery during strong tidal exchanges. And all I'm using today is just a simple one ounce jig head with a small chartreuse grub tail. I'll put a little bit of shrimp scent or herring scent on there. And typically what I'll do is I'll just paddle up into about 15 foot of water right on the edge of that shelf and cast out in front of me. And then as my kayak drifts in the wind or with the current, um, I'll just jig that back to me. And when I do uh, get a hit, um, I typically get hit right coming off that shelf somewhere between 15, between 15 and 30 feet. So let's uh, get this lure back in the water. I've only caught, already caught a couple today. Let's see if we can get another one. Alright, about 12 foot of water now. Cast out. Let that sink to the bottom. And then just start balancing it back towards me. So today I'm just using a ultralight rig setup. This is just a small Fluger ultralight and a Loomis uh, GL2 jigging rod. All I'm doing is just letting, bringing that jig off the bottom a few inches and moving it along right now. The current's moving me at just about somewhere between a half and one mile per hour. There we go. Fish on. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Man, they're really strong. I'm just using six pound test today. So I'm trying to make it a little more sporty. These are great tasting fish. They've got a real uh, clean white meat. I feel better about eating these fish out of Puget Sound than most other fish because of the, the relatively intact vegetation on the delta. There's a wildlife refuge here so that acts like a big biofilter. Squeezes out all the nasty things we've dumped in our rivers. And these are good white. It's not a very firm meat. It's good soft meat. Good for baking. And oh, they're just a great, great fish. Probably one of the most beautiful fish too here in the northwest. Here it is. Oh, there you go. That's a beautiful one there. Look at that. I use barbless hooks as required in Puget Sound, but it also uh, makes for great for getting them off the hook with no fooling around with that barb. And since I do mostly catch and release here, I'll just take home a few so I can make some crab stuff flounder. So let's take a look at this guy. So they are flatfish. So both their eyeballs are up on top of the head there. They have this beautiful pattern underneath, this black and white pattern. And on top they have this sort of tawny and black pattern around the outside. Very rough skin. Uh, beautiful fish. Man, look at that. That's a nice one. I might actually take that guy home. He'll make a good, uh, good crab stuff flounder. Besides a grub, you can use a variety of baits. You can use a dropper style rig and run chunks of bait or grubs. 
gulp also works extremely well. And any bait will you, you can use any bait, uh, strips of herring, shrimp, clam necks, even uh, just night crawlers will do great. There we go. Yeah. All right. Woohoo! Boy, these things are a blast on this ultralight gear. Well, I haven't been out here for more than five minutes without a bite. That's what's great about this fishery. Non-stop action. All day long. Just a ton of fun catch these fish. Beautiful. Look at that. They can get pretty big out here. There's been some 20 plus inch flounder caught. Beautiful fish. These fish, um, you know, there used to be a flourishing flounder fishery on a lot of our coasts, um, but since the increase in the seal and sea lion populations, a lot of our historic flounder fisheries have collapsed. So this is uh, one of the few really healthy flounder fisheries that I know about, and it's definitely worth coming out here and putting some time in to catch these really unique fish. Kayak anglers can take home a generous limit of up to 15 starry flounder from the Nisqually Delta. Fish that are 15 inches or larger in size generally produce the best cuts of meat, and fish smaller than that should probably be released in order to maintain the fishery. As with all our fisheries, it's best only to take home as many fish as you plan on consuming so as not to waste the resource. WDFNW maintains a boat ramp on the west side of the Nisqually Delta at the end of D. Melior Road. You should plan your launch in according with uh, tidal exchanges. You'll want to go out with the outgoing tide and come in with the incoming tide. Try to use tidal exchanges where there's less than 10 foot difference between the low and high tides in order to avoid getting stranded by the, the vast mud flats out on the Nisqually. As with all of our fisheries, be sure and prepare yourself for immersion in the cold water and wear your PFD. Out of me. Oh my god, dude. Woo. So, yeah, there's sea lions out here. <laughs> that was hilarious. 